Good morning, everyone. This video is brought to you by these glasses. Where are the directions for these glasses? Watch repair magnifier upgraded version. Well, I don't think I got the upgraded version because these are pretty awful. Um, so, if you see this advertised on Instagram or whatever, which is where I found it, don't get them. Uh, I think what I ought to do is pluck out one of my eyeballs so I can actually use it because they don't focus on the same thing. You, you see two images through these things and you end up getting a headache. Now there might be some way of heating this thing up and bending them so that they focus on one image, but uh, you put in a new lens, it comes with different lenses, and you'd have to reheat it and rebend it because they need to have something that'll do this, do this parallax view, which they don't. They have this thing that makes them go out and in and up and down and <laughs> lights are supposed to work there's no batteries and who knows how many they're supposed to take three batteries on each side and those are probably five thousand dollars a piece so if you are thinking about buying one of these things give me send me half the 48 dollars these cost and do yourself a favor don't buy them just give me half of the money and you'll lose half the money but i'm saving you half I'm saving you $28 or whatever by not having you waste that much money. You, you don't believe my scheme? Well, you shouldn't. It's just as lame and stupid as the scheme that made me buy those things in the first place. <coughs> so, enough of that. Uh, yesterday I did get some pens in the mail one of which is this one and i could tell by the pictures that were presented to me on ebay that there was a little tiny what looked to be a stub nib in them thar pen and i'm trying to learn how to use stub nibs and having some fun doing it normally i'm a copper plate script flexible nib kind of guy, but sometimes I'm asked to do something that requires a broad pen like this, and I, I don't know how to do this kind of calligraphy. But when I do take one of these pens in my hand and actually write with it, or draw with it, it's really quite an interesting experience. So what I'm trying to do is reacquaint myself with some of these no some of these pens that are, that, that are really really good for that sort of writing now calligraphers who like these sorts of pens tend to want the side stroke as fine as can be in the broad not necessarily as broad as it can be but they want the 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 difference between the fine and the broad to be very uh, distinct. Um, they want this narrow, the side stroke narrow. Um, otherwise it's just this big mop. And um, it works perfectly fine for the kind of lettering they do, which is uh, Old English or black letter or uh, chancery script kind of stuff and the the thick and thin is based on the angle of the nib to the paper rather than pressure now they also some of them uh, like the idea of getting a little bit of pressure so you can get a slightly thicker line when you want when you want it um, so, many of these pens that I have that I've been playing with are, in fact, a little 
bit flexible or a lot flexible. I think this one, no. This one, no. Okay, where are you? It's a Waterman. There we go. For example, here is a Waterman stub nib, and this one is slightly flexible. Yes, you can press down and get a thicker line, but it sort of wants to be it wants to be that that what that's what it really wants to be. But you can press down and get a thicker line, but it's, it seems comfortable in this realm. And this one, on the other hand, is a broad. Look at that stub on that thing. But look at how long the, the tines are. This one you could almost paint a house on with. And it's, I think, the reason that it's doing that railroading there is I think in my exuberance once upon a time, I may have pressed down a little bit more than I ought to have here. You can see there's a little tiny bit of a miss, sh no. There's a little tiny bit of a bend on that. Oh, there might even be a cr crack. There is. There's a little tiny bit of a fissure on the left tine there. And, um, or a stress crack or something. And so I'm going to have to get someone to fix this pen for me because it really is a nice one. But because of that problem that it got at my hands, um, is damaged. Okay. And that was that was it was damaged because that pen was so pliable and its early warning system of telling me you're hurting me now. I didn't hear because it was whispered. And most pens tell you it more loudly, or tell me, I don't know if anyone else hears these voices, but I do. So anyway, let, let's just look at some of these pens. So this one, again, is clearly thick and thin based on the direction. There's some pens that I've been trying out recently that are thick and thin, but you can barely tell that they are stub nibs because the stub is so subtle. We're moving in that direction with this pen. And I don't even think this pen was designed to be a stub. It just kind of accidentally turned out to be one. This is a Waterman firm or rigid nib. And most of the time, firm and rigid uh, were just meant to be rigid, but occasionally you can find one that has a slight shape to the nib that almost inches toward the stubness. Here's another one. It's fine, but it. I don't. I think if I showed this to 99 out of 100 pen collectors or pen users or calligraphers, even they may not think of this as a stub. But it, but it really is. It's just very subtle. Now, the pen I got yesterday, which is why I'm babbling on about all this stuff, was this one. And it's an Eversharp, uh, well, Eversharp pen from the 20s. And it, too, has a slight stub to it, but it's also flexible. So it's never going to get thinner than that on the downstroke. Well, I guess it is if I barely touch the paper. But it's flexible, so it gets more than that on the downstroke by, by applying pressure. So 
This one is now, I don't want to say it's a favorite, but it's, it's what I'm making me smile at the moment. And when I saw this uh, photograph online, it had an engraving on the side of it, which I like. I like engravings. This one isn't particularly beautiful, but it is. I thought it was neat because it had, you know, Providence. So WHS Providence. And then I realized it isn't Providence. It's Proverbs 27.9. So I have not committed the Bible to memory. I'm not one of those Walton children um, who, when they spoke an unkind word to grandma or grandpa, they were sent to their room with the good book and told to memorize 15 chapters. They, um, so I had to look it up. And here is what it says. Let's see if I can read my writing. Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. So, what sort of friend, what sort of heartfelt advice ought I give you? Well, first of all, let's continue talking about this one. So this was probably a gift. Probably a gift to someone whose initials were WMS. And because of the religious element of the Proverbs verse, I suspect that this was given on someone's first communion were they Catholic or becoming confirmed in the Lutheran church or some other such thing and um, or maybe on their saint's day if they if they were named for a saint um, that's more of a Catholic thing I think um, and who was it given by? Now this could have been presented to the WHS by WMS by their doting parents, as if to say, Mother knows best, dear. You're becoming an older young man, and I want you to heed my advice because it is, will bring joy to your heart. Yeah, I, that's, how, that's the story I'm going to go with. This was given to poor little WMS on his First Communion by his, I'll just say it, overbearing mother. I'm making this up, of course, but I had one pen that was really neatly inscribed. I wish I still had it. And it was, it started out with from, rather than, rather than to, you know, blah, blah, from, blah, blah. It was from, blah, blah, to, blah, blah. And it was exactly this kind of thing. It was from mother to Edward Muzzy. And all I can think of is poor Eddie Mun Muzzy. Freddie, I'm sorry, Freddie Muzzy. M-U-Z-Z-Y. It's bad enough having going through life with the name Muzzy but to have a mother on top of that uh, who thinks she comes first before her children is the kind of mother that I didn't have um, and I hope you didn't have either. Mothers in their motherhoodness 
are supposed to think of their children first, but she got she took first billing from mother. And there's just a, something about the mother. It wasn't from mom. It was from mother. So in addition to having a mother like that, he had to call her mother, not ma, not ma, not mom, but mother. I don't know, it just speaks volumes, that little inscription. And this one speaks, not volumes, but a verse. Just a verse, but you can extrapolate on the perfume and incense and pleasantness of advice. Um, don't forget your galoshes. Don't go out with those kind of girls. Don't. Don't what? Oftentimes advice has, there's a lot of don'ts in advice. Don't do this, don't do that. I want advice to be do's. Positive things, things you can do. Do date these kind of girls. Or, in my case, date these kind of guys. These are the kind of guys you should date. So, anyway. Stubnibs. Uh, my mind is wandering again. But that's what it does. I love this one, too. This inscription is Dashwood. Now, I tried to sell this pen for a long, long, long time, and no one seemed to want to buy it. But Dashwood, um, worked at a place from 1939 to 1945. Uh, now maybe Dashwood is a military base somewhere. And those are the war years. Well, the war in Europe years. The U.S. didn't do it till 41, but uh, Dashwood. Dashwood could be a place, a building, I mean a company. Uh, and this pen, now I fitted with one of these nibs that I'm enjoying. And it doesn't have it, the correct cap. Um, it's supposed to have a screw-on uh, commando cap, but they are very hard to come by these days. And I found this one, I bought this one, believe it or not, in a lot of pens, and you can see that there's a lot of teeth marks there. And this works really well as a slip cap on this pen, and so that's how it's going to live the rest of its life. And as long as it's my pen, I don't care. If I sell it to you, if you suddenly love this pen, and want to have it, if your name is Dashwood, and want this pen, um, you're probably not the one, the one with the teeth marks. Now, forensics can probably match this up with something. This might be a dog. There's little, really sharp points there, so I have a feeling that the dog got at this rather than a human. Tooth. I'm not going to extrapolate on this one. Well, that's what I did this morning. I fixed some pens. That's why my hands are inky. And I waxed poetic about perfume and stubs and Edward Muzzy. Edward, Freddy. I can't remember now. Muzzy. I think it was Edward Muzzy. Eddie. It was, it was Eddie. And that's another thing that I didn't like about it was mother was the formal, but Eddie was familiar. And I, I didn't like that either. I thought that was unfair of mother to speak of her son 
familiarly but demanded formality on his part to her. It just tells you about that kind of dame, that kind of mom. Thus ends the lesson. Doodaloo.